All right, everyone. So welcome to the March Chamber Luncheon. This is our virtual version of our luncheon, and we will do our absolute best to make sure that we are keeping things as quote unquote normal as possible. Um, I know that's a little difficult to do these days, but we'll make sure that we're keeping our same program. Um, that way we're uh, recognizing everyone that we normally recognize because we want to make sure that we keep some uh, consistency in our lives and this will be one of them. So uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm happy to see everybody here today and thanks for taking time out of your busy day to be here because that is is very important. Um, I'd like to thank our year-round sponsors. We have our 2020 Chairman Circle sponsors, Advent Health Sebring, Allen J Automotive Network, Chen Dental CLA, which some people ask me the question, that is Clifton Larson Allen, in case you're wondering. We also have Dental Care of Mid Florida, Haycock Insurance Group, Highlands New Sun, Highlands Regional Medical Center, our sponsor today. Mid Florida Credit Union and Sebring International Raceway and Sun and Lake Golf Club. Our President's Club sponsors, we have Bull Gator Plumbing, Center State Bank, Duke Energy, First Southern Bank, Glades Electric Co-op, and Seminole Casino Brighton. So hopefully everybody is able to uh, get some delivery or takeout from your favorite chamber member restaurant today. I don't know if you did. Time got away from me. I was going to order some Sunnies, which I know she's on today uh, through, uh, I think, DoorDash it was, but so much for that. That'll have to happen later. But um, don't mind me. You're welcome to eat and enjoy it just like you would at your, at your normal chamber luncheon. So let me get over to Chantel. Uh, Chantel is let's see me unmute her she's going to give our invocation that way if you are eating today you have it go right ahead Chantel. yes oh heavenly father we come before you humble as we know how just asking you to have your way god we thank you for this opportunity to be before you or we thank you for being in your midst god we thank you for the many blessings we give you all the glory and all the praise lord we ask that you have your way continue to protect us continue to keep us in your holy name we thank you for that you have gone before us on this day god we thank you that you are lining everything up in your order and in your perfect will we give you all the glory we give you all the praise we thank you for your strength right now lord in the name of jesus we ask that we come on one accord in this meeting god we give you all the glory and all the praise in jesus name we pray amen thank you very much appreciate that all right so our next item a few housekeeping items i know that i mentioned earlier but i'll mention it again i have everybody on mute so that way there's no background noise or if you forget and you're you're washing your pots and pans in the background or dogs barking or whatever <laughs> we'll avoid that um so um when when it comes down to it we do our member announcements i'll mention how we do that of course there's the chat feature on the bottom and center so just type if you have any questions um, in about that as well. Um, so introductions. Um, I just wanted to mention that we of course have our um, presenter and sponsor today. We have Jason Kimbrell that is with us. So we will hear more from him in a little bit. He is from Highlands Regional Medical Center. Uh, we have three new members since we last met, which is surprising considering what's going on these days. And we're very lucky that some of them are top tier members. So we have Wet Dog Brewing, Dogs Brewing, which is Michael Noel. I'm sure maybe we'll hear a little bit more from him when we do our member announcements, because who doesn't need a beer these days? Um, and then we have Eastone USA Corporation. Uh, that is a President's Club member that just joined today. And we have All About Lawns, which is a brand new Emissary Club member. So if you are with any of those organizations and would like to uh, introduce yourself when things get kicked off during the member announcements, just hit the chat and let us know and I'll make sure I enable you to talk. All right, so we have, let's get to Kim here. So uh, we have Sergeant Kimberly Gunn from the Sheriff's Office. She'll be doing our Sheriff's Office update. Go right ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. So as you guys know, we had the first virtual meeting last month and you guys were privileged enough to have Sheriff Paul Blackman, 
unfortunately you're stuck with me again so um, i'm going to go ahead and kick this off for i think it's may by the way i think you said march liz but you know we're, we're all losing track of time so it is what it is <laughs> um anyway uh i wanted to go over a couple things i wanted to go over the um governor's um executive order there's been some recent changes and some COVID testing that's going on in the county as well as um, our sheriff's office telephone system so i'll first start with the executive order on May 11th, which was just, just a few days ago, as you guys are aware, the barbershops, cosmetology salons, uh, and especially salons were now open under phase one. We have received several complaints in regards to these barbershops and salons opening. They are allowed to be open under CDC guidelines. So just so you guys are aware, you can get your roots touched up, you can get your hair trimmed. It is um, under the executive order. Also, if you are interested in uh, the COVID testing, the Highlands County um, uh, Health Department recently did a, a drive-through today. Uh, and if you missed that, they, were, they have two more coming up. And that is going to be May 19th from 9 to 11. That is going to be at Lake Placid Camp and Conference Center. The address for that is 2665 Placid View Drive. And the second location that they are going to be having is back at the County Health Department, which is on George Boulevard, 7205 South George Boulevard. And that will actually be a later uh, time from 1700 hours to 1900 hours. So that would be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17. I just wanna make sure five to nine. Wow, okay, yeah, I just wanna make sure that was right, five to nine. They will be having that on May the 21st for those of you that do still have to um, work. So COVID testing, of course, free of charge at those two locations. If you have any uh, questions about that, you can contact the uh, health department, that phone number, and the uh, planning consultant for that is Dustin Bennettfield. His phone number is 382-7273, again, 382-7273, or you could always contact my office at 402-7453. I wanted to also take an opportunity to address the Sheriff's Office phone system. We recently transitioned to an automated system that we are testing out. I'm not sure that we're going to continue. We may or may not, or we're gonna to have to streamline a little bit. We've had a lot of complaints in regards to not being able to get through to the right departments or not being able to get to dispatch. And I wanted to ensure the public that if you need a deputy to respond, you can, and you believe it is not an emergency, you can call the 402-7200 number and hit star and you will actually bypass the whole uh, message from the sheriff, which talks about COVID-19 um, responses and, and efforts. And th basically the gist of the message is we, our dispatchers are not qualified to handle COVID questions. So if you have questions regarding specifically that, we would encourage you to contact CDC or the health department, et cetera. Uh, but if you do need services from the sheriff's office, please call 911 if it is an emergency. If it's not an emergency, but you still want a deputy to respond, please call 402-7200, hit star, and we will respond. Otherwise, it will go through the teleprompts. I believe it's 10 teleprompts, and it will go through detention, law enforcement, and all the different areas, civil, where you can um, independently talk to those departments. So I just wanted to um, let you guys know that, because like I said, we've had, had several complaints. They didn't know where to go or who to talk to, or they didn't get a live person. You'll get a live person if you hit star. And one more final thing, if you guys are in the area um, by Rally Road at 27 across from Glissons, we have a major fire going on. It is not a controlled burn. It is the uh, mobile Home Depot is what it is called. Again, it's across from Glissons and it's a pretty serious fire. So we would encourage everybody to stay out of the area if possible. Uh, with the winds kicking up, we have flames that are shooting 30 feet plus into the air. So we would encourage everyone to please stay out of the area if possible. And I will take any questions if anyone has any questions for me. Just type them right over on the chat section and I will let her know. And I can always call you back if they're still typing away. I'll just, I'll do my announcements and then jump back to you if you'd like, okay? Sure. Sounds good. 
All right, so now we have, um, we're very lucky that we still get to continue doing these really unique uh, student of the month presentations. So we have a student that is here. I am going to go ahead and unmute you, Brandon. That way, if you have anything that you would like to um, say, you can pipe in at any given moment. So um, what we're gonna do, Brandon, we're going to brag on you. You wanna say hi and give everybody a wave so they know who you are? Yes, ma'am. Thank you guys, I appreciate it very much. All right, so there's Brandon. So Brandon Dean is currently a senior at Sebring High School. He's a member of the IV program, president of the Sebring Senior FFA, senior class secretary, as well as a member of the Senior Council, National Honor Society, 4-H and SGA in the community. He has dedicated more than 300 community service hours with the FFA, doing various events in the Sebring area. He's also dedicated nearly 300 hours at Heartland Animal Hospital in Lake Placid, where he works with the veterinarians there to gain career experience in the veterinary field. In the fall of 2020, he will be attending Tennessee Tech University in Cookville, Tennessee, where he will work towards his bachelor's degree in animal science his goal is to work for the USDA Agricultural Research Service. So I wonder, I, I'd imagine Tennessee Tech University is pretty techy. so I wonder if your classes will be in person or online. Who knows, right? We'll see what happens for the fall. <laughs> I'd imagine the tech in that implies they can figure it out. All right, so we also, um, I've got a couple goodies for you and they are going to hit the mail today, so you should probably have them this weekend. I have, a, I'll hold it up. I've got a check for $50 that is courtesy of the tutoring center and a $50 visa gift card and that is from the Palms of Sebring. So those will be heading your way. And I'm going to hold this up because everyone loves this thing, this beautiful <laughs> certificate that will be hanging on your wall for the rest of your life. I'm completely <laughs> sure. So is there anything you'd like to mention that, that you'd like to, to do before I unmute you too? <laughs> Mute you too? I want to say I appreciate you guys to choose me for this honor. I mean, I have many friends that received this. I wasn't, I, I wasn't expecting myself. So I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it very much. Well, we're really happy to have you and we're happy we were able to work things out that you were able to join us today. Good luck with everything. I know this is a crazy school year. And it's not the norm, um, but hopefully everything works out fantastic and we wish you the absolute best in your education. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right, so a couple of chamber announcements that we have. Uh, we have the Chamber Roll Call Program. So what that is, is every day the Sebring Chamber is going to tag 10 random chamber members and um, on Facebook, and we want you to sound off about your business. So that'll give you a chance to tell people what you do, um, what your hours are, what it looks like for you, if there's anything you need to pass on, things like that. So uh, be sure to check Facebook and check for a tag. Um, for you, your organization, and make sure that you're responding to those things because the more people um, uh, reply and get involved with that, the more it'll pop up in the feed and the more people in the community will see everything you have to say. So make sure you do that. Uh, we also kicked off today, and you probably got an email about it. We are going to do a ribbon tying event. It's a little bit different than your normal traditional ribbon ribbon cutting event that you hear about all the time that we do. So what that is, is um, if you would like to sign up for that, you're gonna take some photos and post on social media at your front door or at your business tying the ribbon. You're gonna post that on Facebook. Um, and then when the time is right, we are going to have an event where everyone who has signed up for this ribbon tying event is going to join us on the Sebring Circle. We are all going to tie our ribbons together and we are gonna have a joint community ribbon cutting to say we are open and we have survived and Sebring is strong. So um, we're really excited about that event. Um, I think it will show some solidarity. It is not a requirement to be a chamber member for this because we see it as this is, this is for the community as a whole. 
because there's more than just us. And I think this is one of those times where we have to venture out a little bit because of how important it really is for the success of everyone to be involved in this. So um, if you got that email today, share it with your friends who own a business, um, share it on Facebook. We just posted it a little bit ago. And all you have to do is shoot me an email at ceo at sebring.org and give me your uh, mailing address. I'll send you the instructions, the ribbon, the whole deal, and you can do that. It can be an organization like the sheriff's department. It can be a nonprofit like Toastmasters. It can be anything and everything because all of those things are what make makes our community special. So um, we'd love to hear from you and see, see you as part of that event. Uh, we've already got about 20 um, businesses that are part of it and we just started it at about nine o'clock this morning. So the more it gets some momentum, the better it will be for everyone. Uh, we have our after hours mixer, not in March, in May, the right month. Um, so that will be a week from uh, today and that is virtual. And uh, last time we had quite a few people who joined us. Um, we did uh, a door prize last time. It was the cutest coworker. By coworker, we meant which whatever pet you had sitting on the couch with you, I picked which one I liked the most and that's who won the door prize. This time, it's gonna be the coolest cocktail or drink concoction. Doesn't have to be a cocktail, it can be a beverage as well. So whoever's got the coolest concoction, um, umbrellas and things like that are highly encouraged. So that will be for next week, uh, that's May 21st. And just make sure we've got another email going out as a reminder, just register and join us. It is at four o'clock. And then we have our June networking luncheon. So we are not sure, obviously, of Every day changes. We don't know what's going to be okay, not okay, and things change daily. So um, hopefully we will be back at Sun and Lake, uh, but that's all going to depend on the uh, CDC guidelines of groups. So once they allow um, groups to get back together that will fall under our normal number of people that join us, then we will be there. So um, either it'll be here or it'll be there. We don't know, but either way it's happening. So we'll make sure that everyone is part of that. All right, so on to our program. Let me go over and make sure I've got the right people. Oh boy, I don't know which one is him because I've got their name three times. So I'm just gonna unmute all three of these people. We'll see which one's the right one. So we have today with us Jason Kimbrell. We're very excited to have him here with us today. Um, he is the CEO of Highlands Regional Medical Center with, within HCA's East Florida Division. Jason is a veteran of the US Air Force where he served nationally and internationally. Jason was named uh, by 850 Business Journal as one of the top 40 leaders under 40. Jason began his healthcare journey in the public safety sector serving as a firefighter critical care paramedic, a flight paramedic, and EMS commander before moving on to executive leadership position. He is uh, big with community service. He served with his chamber in another area, Boys and Girls Club, mission mentor, uh, volunteer fireman, uh, Rotarian, and much more. And of course, more than important than all of that, he uh, danced in the Highlands County Dancing with the Stars along with me two years ago with, where I just barely didn't make a moron of myself. He did much better than I did. All right, Jason, it's your turn, you're up. Thank you very much. Yes, that was a, that was a great time, a great event. Uh, certainly enjoyed it for sure. Uh, I did uh, lose, as, as uh, Liz was talking about, I believe it was a conspiracy. I don't have time to talk about it on this uh, engagement, but uh, maybe later on you could have me back and I'll talk about really what happened there, but uh, it's all good. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank uh, Liz in the chamber, uh, just hearing the things that are going on with the tying, the ribbon tying event and just all these other things, it's going to bring the community closer together. Uh, during, it, you just you just heard uh, in my introduction, I, I've been a firefighter paramedic. The better part of my adult life, uh, I was a paramedic uh, working for a, a agency over in Okaloosa County uh, post 9-11. And this reminds me of really the coming together, the strength, the um, uh, almost the, the newness of recognizing who your neighbors are. And uh, I, I believe that we're going to come out stronger on the other end of this pandemic. Uh, I believe things happen for a reason. And uh, just the, 
just the picture of community that's going to come out of the ribbon tying event is is just uh, is just awesome. So uh, during the during the pandemic period, uh, we've we've seen firefighters and law enforcement officers uh, being recognized and uh, uh, reciprocating that back uh, to healthcare community coming together. I know I'm I'm proud to to be part of this community and uh, certainly. Uh, see us getting stronger uh, from from each end of uh, the, the the county and across the across the world. So, a little bit about what I'll do is I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about HCA Healthcare and uh, tell you about what we've done for the fight against this pandemic, and then hopefully open up the floor for some questions that you might have. Uh, of course, this is a, a more of an informal setting than we normally do, uh, which is good. I wanted to I wanted to be that way. A little bit about HCA Healthcare. If you guys have, have been in the community uh, for for a time, you, you understand that this hospital has gone through an evolution of of a true community-based hospital some 50 plus years ago, where the structure was owned and operated by the county, and then it went through multiple different evolutions of of the county government uh, getting out of the hospital business, the operating side of it. And then other agencies picking it up and, and, and kind of moving it along, kind of taking the baton around the, uh, you know, around the track. And so in, uh, in November of 2017, HCA Healthcare, which we operate 192 hospitals across the U.S. and six hospitals in the United Kingdom. We have 2,000 access points across, uh, across the country. Uh, we have 53 hospitals now in the state of Florida. We brought Highlands Regional Medical Center into that HCA East Florida Division uh, a family of, of, of hospitals. And so that, that's significant uh, because uh, anytime that you take a, a community uh, hospital and you connect it to a network, it makes the community safer. And so uh, uh, Highlands Regional is part of the East Florida Division. There's four divisions that provide uh, coverage into the state of Florida of its now 50, uh, 53 hospitals. And so there's the South Atlantic Division that falls into the uh, upper um, uh, northeast part of the state of Florida in Jacksonville. Uh, the North Florida Division, which is where I came from, uh, from Pensacola, uh, all the way into uh, Osceola in, in Orlando. And then we have the West Florida Division, which uh, peppers hospitals all across the, uh, the southwest part of uh, uh, the Sunshine State. And then you have our division, which Highlands is at the north part of the East Florida Division. There's 14 hospitals within the East Florida Division that extends all the way down to uh, Miami. Uh, our hospitals in the southern part of our division is in the center of the epicenter of, uh, or is the epicenter of the pandemic. Uh, if, you, if you look at the total hospitalized patients around the pandemic, uh, we, have re we have consistently maintained about 60 to 65 percent of the care for those patients. Uh, when it comes to uh, size and scale, HCA Healthcare is really able to, to utilize the, the large data sets uh, to, to build evidence-based order sets and uh, these types of processes that uh, increase quality and access and, and overall patient satisfaction. Uh, yeah, the uh, transition that this hospital has made in, in uh, under three years, it, you know, I'm a bit biased, but is, is remarkable. Uh, We'll, uh, I'll talk in just a minute about the investments that we've made uh, in robotics and all of these other types of things. But the, the most unique part about this hospital, uh, where we are now, is our people. We have amazing people uh, that provide unprecedented service for us to fulfill our mission. And our mission is, above all else, we're committed to the care and improvement of human life. Uh, so these are real people with real names, brothers and sisters. And, and when you walk the halls of this hospital, uh, you don't feel corporate. You don't feel uh, that this hospital is, the, is, is part of the world's leader in healthcare. And it, it, what you feel is a culture that's centered around uh, patients uh, with real names that have families. And, and, and we not, don't only care for the patient, we care for the entire family. And so as, as I talk about in just a moment about where we're going as a hospital, uh, the types of things that we, that we offer today that uh, uh, hasn't been here uh, ever in the history of the hospital, I don't want you to uh, misunderstand really what our strategic advantage is, and that's our people. Uh, we are a for-profit hospital. Uh, I often say that the difference between a for-profit and a nonprofit is we pay a whole lot of taxes. 
And so, uh, you know, we, we care about the patient, all of the strategies that we put in place in terms of growth and, and financial performance, all points back to our mission each and every day. If you come in my war room, as we're talking about strategies for the new year, you're going to consistently hear quality, patient outcomes, uh, how do we uh, increase services uh, to uh, uh, underserved areas, uh, what we do for our community uh, is part of, uh, of our walk every single day. So uh, we are a significant economic engine uh, for the community. Uh, Highlands uh, is a $56 million economic engine just in this county. $33 million in salaries and wages and benefits, $9 million in capital investments, uh, $4 million in charity and uncompensated care, $6 million in local uh, vendor support. Now, I want to kind of pause on that for just a minute. When you, when you hear HCA Healthcare, a uh, large corporation, you, you, know, you would think that uh, we would have uh, leverage points to be able to bring in uh, contractors when we do uh, when we do work in the hospital and I, that's not the case we always focus in on uh, the local vendors the uh, flooring supply uh, uh, folks and the painters and electricians and uh, lawn care uh, um, um, companies and so just in vendor support in this county we spend six million dollars a year six million dollars for businesses and if, if Liz unmuted right now you can probably say, hey, I, I had a part in that, or hey, they, they, they did support my small business, and that's who we are. $1.7 million in local taxes, $1.7 million. $459,000 in indigent care, $564,000 in property taxes, and $730,000 in, in sales tax. Uh, I say all that to say this, uh, we, we are a, a good steward of, of uh, uh, the dollars that we get brought in. Uh, our margins are, 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 are thin, just like every hospital, because we do the right things. We do uh, the right thing for the community and everything else takes care of itself. We're certainly proud to be here. Um, our company as a whole, as I kind of wrap up about HCA, we have over 270,000 employees. 94,000 uh, of those are nurses, RNs, 38,000 active physicians, and 30 million annual uh, patient encounters. And so we're able to, especially on this type of an, a pandemic, we're able to, 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 to make hospitals and communities like ours safer because of the resources that we have. And so super, uh, super proud of that. Uh, real quick on uh, the types of uh, services that we were offering today that, that hadn't been here before is uh, last March, and, and, and many of you guys participated in our ribbon cutting for our senior ER, uh, it made a lot of sense as we look at where we can focus our energy, uh, where we can get the, uh, the greatest return in terms of uh, uh, patient improvement and, and, and quality of life is concentrating on, on seniors. And uh, this community consistently ranks as one of the one of the uh, oldest average uh, mean age uh, across the U.S. And so last March, we cut the ribbon on our senior ER. We have specialized parking for them. Um, uh, the aesthetics in the room uh, are, 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 are really, really nice with plantation shutters and dimmable lights and, and uh, low uh, slip um, hardwood floors and uh, a toilet in each room. So it's really, really nice to, uh, to be able to offer that to our community. Uh, the other thing is the Orthopedic Institute at Highlands Regional. Uh, we, when we ended up closing the OB unit back in uh, January of 2019, uh, we, we had to make a tough decision. What are we going to, you know, what are we going to do? How can we offer a service to uh, the community that keeps patients from having to leave the community to be able to get care? What can we offer here that is unmatched in, in other areas of the state or even across the country? And so we invested a considerable amount of money uh, into renovating the OB unit here at, at Highlands into a hotel-like uh, facility that uh, is unprecedented. There's, there's, you have to drive a long way to be able to find a unit such as this. It's an isolated unit, uh, uh, large rooms, plantation shutters, the aesthetics are, are, are uh, uh, modeled uh, after a high-end hotel uh, from the uh, chef greeting each patient uh, with a five-course meal to uh, just the way that we do things. It's, uh, it, it's really special and I'm uh, very, very proud of that. Uh, additionally, 
we uh, just recently uh, brought in robotics uh, into uh, Highlands Regional. And so by offering robotics, there's, there's, there's multiple different things that you can kind of look at. One is what's the platform of technology? And so we invested in the DaVinci XI robot. And so the DaVinci XI robot is the highest level of technology uh, on the minimally invasive side in the free world. And so there's other, there's other uh, DaVinci SI uh, platforms that are older models. Uh, the XI offers a, uh, a different set of uh, benefits. Uh, you have less uh, post-operative pain. Uh, there's less uh, blood loss. You have a uh, increased um, uh, or an improvement of, of length of stay. The, uh, the scarring uh, piece of it, because you only have three ports, is less. Uh, it's smaller in um, uh, the incision site. And uh, as I mentioned, yeah, faster uh, recovery. So uh, that's a, you know, that's certainly a, uh, something that we're, we're super proud of. Hopefully after this pandemic, we'll be able to uh, offer an open house and uh, we're gonna do a name the robot uh, community project and, and, and let folks come in and, and kind of play around with the, with the robots. We also have the uh, Mazora X orthopedic robot that allows us to do some really cool things with, uh, with orthopedics and total joints. And uh, so uh, be on the lookout for a community event centered around that here uh, pretty soon. Uh, lastly, in terms of uh, what we offer here is uh, this is a big year for us. Uh, we're spending a, a lot of energy and a lot of resources to uh, launch a heart and vascular center here. And so we recently brought on uh, a month ago, uh, brought on Dr. Athapan. Uh, he is a structural heart. Uh, physician uh, does a phenomenal job. Uh, he's going to help us launch the uh, our next chapter for uh, cardiovascular here. Uh, we're going to be able to be uh, extend from uh, our, our patient contacts here that may require open heart surgery or uh, some type of valve work. Uh, we're going to be able to see those patients here uh, uh, and and get them to to Lawnwood to where Dr. Athpin can go over there work with the cardiovascular team to be able to do this uh, high level uh, procedures that uh, is not available here today. So really excited about that. Uh, also, I'd like to announce that we are extending into the Lake Placid area, uh, an area that uh, really I feel like uh, needs specialists like vascular surgery, which we now have uh, vascular surgery here uh, with Dr. Saka that has uh, phenomenal uh, outcomes uh, from, from his services. And so we're gonna we're gonna be right there downtown uh, Lake Placid, um, and uh, we're gonna put uh, specialists down there to, to have access to uh, that part of our uh, community. Uh, now, real quick, I'll go through just our fight against pandemic as I, as I kind of wrap up here, uh, just to give you an idea. Our division, uh, like I said, there's uh, there's four divisions in the state of Florida. Uh, Highlands is part of the East Florida division. There's 14 hospitals. Uh, to date, our division has tested 10,798 uh, patients. So to date, uh, the, our division has uh, 1,536 inpatient positives. So what has what that has done is allows us to have our, uh, a kind of a laboratory for the fight against COVID-19. Uh, not only are we at the, the epicenter of this pandemic in the state of Florida, but we also have our Tulane Hospital in Louisiana. And if there is a best practice or if there's an outcome uh, that, that we're seeing with these high volume hospitals, we bring that back here to Highlands uh, to be able to care for our patients. We've discharged 1,329 patients in our division today that are positive, that are recovering now um, uh, nicely. Just today in our division, as we're on this call, we have 205 positives in our, just in our division here uh, in East Florida. Locally here at home, uh, we have uh, managed 16 of the uh, hospitalized. So rough, just under, we've been running about 46% of the community's hospitalized uh, positive uh, COVID-19s. Um, we only have one positive in-house right now that, that looks to be discharged here in the next day or so. We went three solid days without a positive in our entire hospital. I think I, I, think I jinxed us when I sent a, a text out to our team uh, celebrating the, uh, the third day of, uh, of uh, having a COVID-free hospital. Um, we did, uh, 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 
of our hospitalized patients, uh, we did have one that was con uh, one death of the, uh, I didn't look at it today, but I think there's uh, eight, eight or so deaths in our community. Uh, one of those uh, had come from this hospital. So uh, we hate to lose anyone uh, in, the, in this fight against the pandemic. Uh, I am proud to say that uh, we, you know, we're, we're discharging more that are doing well at home than uh, that have, uh, have lost a battle, so. Now, uh, as far as uh, surgeries and such, we did start doing elective surgeries again last week. And uh, coming soon, we're gonna be doing drive-by testing for our surgery patients. Uh, so the majority of all of our surgery patients are getting COVID tested. Now, whether that's diagnostic testing or if they're requiring uh, a total joint, for the most part, the, the surgeons are requiring the, the, the COVID testing. And so what we're gonna put into place is a really, really slick system to where patients can drive up, uh, get tested as a pretest uh, within 48 hours of their, their surgery or their procedure, and then they'll be uh, placed on the surgery schedule uh, without any interruption. So that should, uh, that should work out really, really well. Uh, we are testing right now on average of every other patient that comes into the building. That's not by design, we test every other, but uh, an average of about 52 to 56% of all of our patients in the building uh, have received the, uh, the COVID test. So uh, that's a little bit about what, we, uh, what we're doing around COVID. Uh, we did step out early to, uh, to limit visitation. We stepped out early to do universal precautions and universal masking. Uh, we're gonna continue to, uh, again, leverage the data and, and then and the information that we receive uh, from, from our large hospital systems and uh, ensure the safety of our hospital uh, uh, overall, our physicians, our visitors, and staff. So uh, I'd love to answer some questions that you have. And um, uh, is that okay, Liz? Absolutely. Can we do it? Absolutely. I actually have the first one for you. So um, from Judith, she said, um, when you um, switched from the OB unit, which was the new use that you put it to? She couldn't, she didn't hear that part. Okay, yeah. So we, we converted that to a, a seven bed uh, orthopedic institute. And so it's a closed unit. So when you walk into the unit, uh, it's got this, um, um, this digital eye that automatically opens up the, these glass doors. It's got etched uh, Orthopedic Institute on it. Uh, you walk down the hallway and you've got uh, dimmable LED lighting. You've got a coffee shop to the left. You make a left-hand uh, turn uh, and, and, it, and it looks like a high-end hotel. You've got uh, uh, shiplap walls and, and uh, Edison bulbs and, and uh, it's, it looks like a, a high-end hotel and it's its own unit. Uh, the experience and what we've been able to, 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 uh, to get out of that is, is, is quite impressive. As we measure our patient satisfaction, we have 100% patient satisfaction in that unit, 100%. And uh, that's through a third-party uh, press Ganey survey. And so uh, if, if you all would, would like to have a tour of that, uh, we, you know, we offer tours uh, throughout the course of the week. You just uh, uh, reach out to Lindsay, uh, reach out to administration, we'll set up a, uh, a visit for you. Fantastic. So we have another question here. What type of COVID test are you using? Okay. Yeah, so we are using right now the Abbott 3000 system, uh, which offers a high level of accuracy, one of the highest level of uh, accuracies. Uh, in HCA, we have our own regional laboratory. And so uh, because we know the Abbott system, we're able to do about 735 tests a day or 735 tests at a time. Uh, we, we take the sample here uh, and we have a, a courier service that runs four times a day from here down to Fort Lauderdale. And the turnaround time is in between six and 12 hours. Uh, we, we have uh, remained consistent with, with staying on the Abbott system because of the accuracy associated with it. Uh, uh, we are hesitant, I am hesitant to do anything that is going to offer, uh, that is going to present two things. One, not an accurate sample, and number two, a delay in the turnaround time. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was, there was some sluggishness uh, as everyone's kind of finding their place and, and how to get these samples turned around. Uh, now we found our rhythm, and uh, we, we know how accurate the data is, and uh, we're going to stick to it. Very good. Okay. Um, and Judith also mentioned she's happy to know that you guys are using local vendors as much as possible. So she appreciates that. Um, we also had a question from Chantel. She wanted to know, um, as a local business, how can she connect 
um, with you to offer services um, at your hospital. I think, yeah, I think Lindsay is a great one there. Uh, she can help navigate through because we have vendors all the time that want to come, you know, come in, whether it's uh, uh, lighting folks or design people and, um, uh, you know, furniture folks. And so Lindsay is a good one there. Our director for uh, supply chain also is very helpful uh, in doing that. Uh, we we have found uh, that Highlands County really for the size of the hospital our community offers a lot for us on day in and day out from uh, plumbing services to electric and, and and it's it's rare that we have to bring in vendors from outside the community uh, we do at times for the large projects but many of our uh, many of our vendors and partners have been uh, running into them at the chamber which is what we love to hear and I know you do as well Liz mm -hmm. or folks coming in the door and saying hey this is what I can offer for you Are you interested in? and um, it goes from there very good well I will connect Chantel with Lindsay and I'll make sure I get an email out to each of them so we get them connected. Do we have any other questions for Jason today? All right. I think you're off the hook, Jason. Yeah, they just asked what was Lindsay's last name is oh. Pearson, Lindsay Pearson. Yes, absolutely, Lindsay Pearson. Very good. Yeah, and thank you all again. I hope your you and your family remain safe during this, this pandemic. And if there's anything that we can do for you as uh, Highlands Regional HCA Healthcare, uh, please visit our website, uh, like us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we're gonna do a lot more, uh, say a lot more, we're gonna begin doing uh, Facebook Live and also a YouTube channel to get the message out on what we're doing. And uh, we appreciate the support so far and we look forward to the days to come. Take care. Very good, thank you. All right, so um, now it's time to hear from you guys. So if you have anything going on that you'd like to share um, and just go ahead over to the chat, type in there that you'd like to make an announcement and I'll go ahead and um, make sure that I unmute you one at a time. I just noticed that we had another question. Jason, are you still there? Let me see here. Go ahead. I think we can hear you now. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Did you see the question from Ingra about the hospital decreasing the rate of readmission for seniors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, HCA, all hospitals, not just HCA, there's a, there's a vested interest in uh, decreasing the readmission rates. And the main focal points on readmissions come down to uh, post heart attack patients, uh, post CHF uh, patient uh, pneumonia, and um, uh, there's, there's uh, post hip patients. And so we place uh, what's called tracers on those patients. Uh, it's not injected in their neck like a, like a dog would, uh, but we, we administratively place uh, tracers on those patients. And uh, by having a uh, kind of a quasi closed hospitalist group, which is what we've recently done, we have one set of hospitalists uh, that uh, consult the specialist. Uh, it narrows down, um, the uh oh <laughs> I hope we didn't did we just lose him <laughs> I think we might I think we may have uh I think we may have lost him unfortunately well hopefully he'll be able to jump back in and then we'll finish with the question Sorry about that, guys. The joys of technology, right? The joys of technology. All right, so we have, let's see here, we have, um, we have an announcement from Heartland Horses. Um, if you can let me know, um, Kirsten, I don't see your name on this list, but if you have the ability in the bottom left hand of the screen, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and talk if you'd like. Okay, I just wanted to update you on Heartland Horses. Um, basically, um, we don't have the therapeutic riding participants back right now. We want to be talking, we were talking about when to move them back into the program and also retraining some volunteers. So, okay, sorry, right now it was quiet, <laughs> but okay, um, sorry. Um, 
we are not closed. We will be having, um, hopefully the end of July, um, a camp and then um, some scouting groups might come in small numbers to, you know, get a badge or something because we did have to cancel our biggest fundraiser of the year. So we still want to be able to function. So we are not closed, but we are um, talking about when to reintegrate therapeutic riding and volunteers. Very good. Thank you for that. Much appreciated. All right. So um, let's see here. Linda. All right, Linda, go right ahead. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's so great to see so many faces here. I'm just here representing Heartland Talk of the Town Toastmasters, of course. We are still doing virtual meetings via Zoom. Toastmasters International has indicated to us that they don't want any, any Toastmasters all over the world meeting in groups again until at least July 1st. So they've closed us down till after June. We are meeting virtually. We meet the first and third Tuesdays of each month. If you'll contact me, send me a chat, send me a text to my phone number, and I will set up, a, set you up with the link to join one of our meetings to see how we do all of this. And then you can get all excited about coming to see us live and in person shortly. My phone number is 214-4288, and I will watch for chats as well of anybody that's interested in more information about being a better communicator and leader. Thank you. Wonderful. All right, Chantel, you are up. Hi, everyone. I am Chantel Gilmore, your local LuLaRoe retailer. I have so many comfortable, stylish, affordable clothing. Um, this t-shirt that I'm wearing, it brings joy. It brings smiles to your face, encouraging, inspirational graphic tees, comfortable leggings, tops, dresses, you name it. If I don't have it, I will get it. Um, my number, 863-381-7716. I'm located in the same plaza as Chamber of Commerce, 259 U.S. 27 um, North. Um, come by, stop by. My hours are Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 10 to 1. Um, Mondays by appointment only. Um, Lula Row, I'm here for you. I'm here to serve my local community. Thank you. Very good. All right, Ingra from, oh, where'd you go? Did I lose you? I think, um, Ingra, are you here? There you are. Go right ahead. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so very much for the opportunity, Liz. Um, Wanted to tell everyone about a really unique partnership between uh, Florida Department of Elder Affairs, Department of Business and Professional Regulation, and the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. Uh, we are partnering with local restaurants, and which will provide nutrition for seniors, seniors in our community. This is a bit of a small economic stimulus from the Florida Department of Elder Affairs. We're actually launching the first phase here in Highlands County with the Gator Shack. Seniors will be able to come and pick up meals from the Gator Shack uh, Monday through Saturday. There is a, a smallest, a really, really short assessment that needs to be completed initially. We're working with Another local restaurant still trying to get the, the menu together and the training uh, provided that will provide delivery of their meals to seniors um, in Highlands County. And we're launching a program similar to this in Hardy County to begin on next Monday. Wonderful. I'm so happy to hear about that. Thank you for sharing that, Ingra. And okay. come come say I think that we have Jason back to finish answering your question. <laughs> Jason are you there? Yeah sorry about that Lindsay pulled the cord out. Oh. Uh, not really not really it's easier to blame her. Yeah so the question was about readmissions so one thing that we've done here around readmissions because it's a big deal it's a big deal for all hospitals is we've uh, instead of having uh, multiple um, ho hospitalists or admitting physicians, 
we've got one hospitalist group. So if a patient presents into the ER, uh, we know that has uh, you, you know a bunch of comorbidities or uh, would be a high risk, whether it's social, not having the social comforts or support at home, that could be a could bounce back in the hospital. Uh, during the admission, we, we connect case management early to those patients. We have one hospitalist group instead of multiple, so you're not, you're not having to, uh, uh, a lot of these patients become known to that group. Uh, it's a total of four doctors total. And so it's almost, their, uh, almost like another primary care doctor for them. And then we'll put tracers on those patients and uh, we've got a system uh, that, we, uh, that we use that when the patient's discharged and they are, uh, the tracers placed on them, then we have a team that uh, calls them back to make sure that they have uh, their appointments, their next appointment set up, whether if they're a CHF patient with their pulmonologist, uh, their primary care, and more importantly, uh, number one is they have the medicines at the time of discharge. Our case management team will uh, work with our seniors or work with those that are underinsured or un uh, uninsured uh, to partner with uh, Publix or Walmart to, uh, to be able to get uh, medicines at no cost or at a discounted, uh, discounted cost. Now we apply, we try to apply these practices because HCA Healthcare continues to be uh, the largest safety net system in the state of Florida for uninsured. Uh, and, and Medicaid, so we, you know, we're, we're kind of used to this uh, population management and population health. Um, no hospital is perfect, uh, but it is a uh, it is a concentrated effort for us to try to keep seniors from uh, having to come back into the hospital post discharge. Awesome, thank you for jumping back and answering that for us. All right, and we have Sheila Richards. I'm so happy to hear from you. She's over at the Heartland Association of Realtors. Sheila, are you there? Sheila. <laughs> Gotta love technology, guys. I think, I don't know if she stepped away, but we'll see. Oh, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? We okay. can. Sorry about that. Love technology. Thank you, Liz, for having this virtual uh, chamber meeting today. This is wonderful. We're going to try our first one later this month for our membership, doing it virtually. Great to see all these faces. Just wanted to give a quick little update. You know, everybody wants to know what real estate is doing. So I get, I kind of dug in and did a super hyper little search. And just from March 1st to today, 377 closed residential sales. We currently have 32 that are pending. The average price is ranging about $172,000. Days on market, 195 of those that sold were on the market for less than 30 days. We're definitely in a seller's market. We were fortunate that we were deemed essential services from the get-go. I do wanna let all chamber members know that all realtors and all brokerages are following the CDC guidelines. We did put into effect very early on at the onset, uh, no public open houses. We're doing those virtually. We are limiting seriously any public showings of properties uh, and those showings that are occurring, of course, following the CDC guidelines. So we wanna thank all of the chamber partners out there because when a home sells, your businesses benefit as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing with us. All right, Melissa, go right ahead. Okay, hi, I'm Melissa from South Florida State College. And I just wanted to let everybody know that we are here and our classes are online for the summer. Um, uh, there have not been any decisions for the fall as of yet, but we do have courses that you can take from home. Um, you know, in our corporate and community ed, if you want to add some skills to your resume. And then if you are children who uh, plan to go to universities and maybe are a little apprehensive right now and they want to stay local, they can start at South Florida State College um, and get their gen eds taken care of in, these, in two years and have an associate degree when they leave and pursue their bachelor's degree at a university. We do have articulation agreements with universities, which makes a seamless transition from South Florida State College to those universities. So that would be a great choice for them. And also a lot of our students get financial aid, so they can go to school for free. 
and um, they can get an associate degree in just two years. And with classes being online, they can stay home and get those degrees. Um, or, you know, if uh, classes pick up and we can do face to face, they can come to South Florida State College and um, start their goals and their dreams here. Also, I just want to say that we are getting back into the office. Um, our staff and faculty and, and employees are getting back to the office on Monday, May 18th. So we will be there. We have, there's been no break or delay in serving our students. We, while we were working remotely, we all had emails and our phones forwarded to our emails. So everybody was able to get messages and respond. We also have social media. Our social media accounts can be found on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and it's at SFSC Panthers. Uh, we also had Zoom webinars. So we started with a virtual open house. Then we did a financial aid webinar two weeks later. Then we did a webinar for nursing, our nursing programs. And then yesterday we had a webinar about dual enrollment. So we will continue to do these webinars virtually so that anybody from anywhere can attend for free and learn about South Florida State College and what programs we offered and all of the services that we offer for our students. So if you have any questions, you can either email me at k-u-e-h-n-l-e-m at southflorida.edu or you can call the college which our phone number is 863-453-6661 and we're there for for anybody that needs any of our educational services or um if they just want to walk around campus for a little while and sit by the lake that's also something that that can help out at this time Awesome, thank you. All right, Jamie, you mentioned that you wanted to add as well. Go right ahead. Yeah, adding on to what Melissa had shared, another thing to kind of help, if you know of any students that are currently enrolled at SFSC, that going through some difficult times, we through the CARES Act have the opportunity to be able to bless them and give them that financial assistance. Um, there are opportunities out there, so you can go to our website, like um, Melissa had already indicated, um, www.southflorida.edu, and there is information, Melissa has it posted everywhere, where you can get some CARES Act assistance. Um, so if you know of any students or uh, families of students that are going through any difficult times right now, and that could be that they've gotten laid off or they just have any issues that is prohibiting them for being able to continue their education or if they just had hard times and they are a student, we can help. So just wanted to share that as well. All right, very good. Very good. Appreciate that. So I am going to go ahead. I unmuted Miss Jamie Gallo over here, Chamber of Commerce, Princess and Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, um, We've got a couple of door prizes. Of course, we have to keep our format normal. So she has got that. I'm passing it to you, ma'am. Okay, let's see. So first we are drawing for a sweet treat surprise from Madi at Right Card, Right Time. And that goes to Chantel Gilmore with Lululemon Inspired You. Very cool. Okay, congratulations. Next, we are drawing for um, a complimentary box of ammo in any caliber of your choice, up to $35 from Boom Boom's Guns and Ammo. And that's going to go to Ingra Gardner at New Hope. Congratulations. And Finally, we are drawing for a gift basket from Highlands Regional, Regional Medical Center. And that is going to Penny Kosarek with the Republican Party of Highlands County. Congratulations. Awesome. And I'll work with you guys and make sure we get everybody connected and get your prizes to you. All right. Well, again, thank you to our presenter and our sponsor. We have Jason Kimbrell, of course, from Highlands Regional Medical Center. Thank you guys for your support and for being with us today. Of course, a reminder about our mixer a week from now. So just make sure you register for that. And of course, to get in on the roll call, make sure you check your Facebook so you have the info on that. And for the ribbon tying event, check your email. If you have any questions, give us a call at the chamber. 
385-8448. We're happy to help anytime. You guys have a fantastic day and thank you for being with us.